In this video, I'm going to cover the setup in DigitalWrench, and there are a lot of options you can use in setup. So what we do is go up to Setup, Company Setup, and on the first screen, you'll see the company name, company address, city, state, zip, email, and website. Now, if you don't have them, don't fill them out. On the top right corner, you'll see an ID number, and for some states, you've got to have an ID number on your repair order. If you're in Canada, you want to click the Set for Canada button, which will turn on the province and postal code, etc. Down here, you can check on a update date for work done, so that when the work is finished, it will update the date to the correct date for when it was finished. Down here, you've got a vehicle display fields, and you can set it for all or none. If you set it for all, you can still turn off certain areas. You can turn them on and off by clicking on these little squares right here. So if you don't want insurance options on, you can click that right there with everything set to all, and it will turn those off. Now, depending on your business type, you can accept the defaults we have auto, motorcycle, boat, computer, ATV, vehicle, truck. Or if you want to get more precise in your particular business, you can click on select business type and you can go in here and you can actually set up what you want the fields to say. And you have invoices that are available that will print whatever you type in here. So you can see on my marine business, I've got it saying unit name is boat. I've got, instead of engine number, I have drive number. Instead of bin, I have hull number. Over here, I have registration instead of license. And instead of odometer, I have hours. So I can set these up to be exactly what I want. On the second page, taxes and charges, you've got whether you want parts to be taxable, no, tax one, tax two, or both. Same for labor. Same for other charges, and other charges would be things like flat rate fees, oil disposal, tire disposal, etc. Over here, you can actually set up what you want to call these different taxes, state, local, tax one. So I could go over here and I can say local, and then I can put in my tax rate. On the second section down here in the middle, supplier disposal fees, percentage based on parts or labor. If it's the entire ticket, you're going to pick both. You can also set a flat rate fee by clicking on this. Instead of having a percentage, you can go to a flat rate, and you can go to a flat rate on either side. This is your maximum supply charge. You say, well, I don't want it to exceed $25. Over here, you say whether or not you want to tax the disposal fees or the supply charges. And down here, we have a special option for zeroing labor tax if no parts or special charges. So in your state, if you don't charge taxes on a labor-only work order, then you're going to click on that. The bottom section of the taxes and charges page is going to cover technician commissions, default labor rate, a secondary wholesale labor rate. And down here on the very bottom, we're going to have the markup type, which is either margin or percentage. And you can also click over here for customer markup OK, which means each individual customer can have their own markup rate. So if you have special customers that the markup rate is going to be lower than others, then you can use that option. On the next page, you've got RO memos. RO memos are going to be what you print on your repair order or your invoice. The one on the bottom prints on the bottom of the invoice. The one on the top prints towards the bottom depending on the invoice. Okay, so you can have two of those different ones. On the to-do, we've got the ability to set up a to-do list for your technician. So the most common things that you're going to do, you're going to put these into the, into the to-do list area and then you're going to be able to choose those from your invoice and print out a to-do list for your technician, which will let them initial the fact that that was done. Now, on our repair order screen, you'll see some different colored lights. And these different lights indicate different things. And so if you go down here, you can say 
what you want the lights to indicate. Waiting for parts, uh, waiting on anything you want finished, parts on order, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can you can say anything you want to say that these lights are going to indicate for you. And we have defaults in there. And if you want to know what they are, you can just put your mouse on the light from the repair order screen and it'll tell you what it's set for default. On the other settings, we have a real-time labor guide path if you're using the real-time labor guide CD. Up here at the top, uh, sync vehicle tags and sync odometer hours. Most of the repair places turn those on for at least the odometer hours feature so that when you put in a new odometer reading it, it gets updated and syncs it from the last one. Uh, if you use tags you're going to want to turn that on. If you don't you can turn these off. You can always turn them on later. Uh, down at the bottom we've got the set status values and lights so if you're not using lights you can actually use a status and there's a status field that will appear on the work order screen and you can set these status areas for whatever you want. And down here you can decide whether you want to use the status lights or the status drop down. On the next screen you've got each computer and this means that if you had a multiple computer setup you could individually specify what each computer was set like so they would display differently. So on the work order screen you're going to see the name of the supply chargers. In this case, I picked EBA chargers. The folder to save PDF files. So if you're writing PDF files, you're going to save them in a certain place. Uh, most of the time, I would click on this little folder, and I would go underneath the wrench folder, and I would pick PDFs. But you can specify other places. In the center, it's going to say choose to display or hide the following fields on the part screen. So on the part screen, you can decide whether or not you want to display the manufacturer field, the serial number field, shipping, or interest. And you can turn those on and off. So display, skip, or hide, depending on your business. This next box down here turns on different windows inside your work order form. So if you're not going to have pictures on your work orders, you can turn that off. If you're not going to use purchase order, you can turn that off. If you're not going to use the revised estimate, you can turn that off. And what that will do is it will completely disappear from the screen, giving you a totally different look and not getting in your way. If you are going to use them, you can turn them back on. Okay, over here is our normal form and our old form. I would recommend the normal form all the time. This is edit and place on RO, which is repair order. And I would turn that off unless you have a special need for it. It gives you the ability to actually click on an item and edit it in place. Not recommended, but you can do it. If you use our point of sale, you can come up and you can put in a cash customer. Then you can choose a cash customer and you can sell to that cash customer without having to enter a customer's name. If you have a default technician, you can put it in here. This button right here is default on. It's going to ask you to back up when you close the program. Highly recommended you back up every day, but if you don't, at least once a week. But I would say every day, because whatever you don't back up, if something happens, you're going to lose it. On the last tab over here is your printer tab. We have 21 invoices on the Internet you can take a look at different types. One will have part numbers, one won't have part numbers, one, one will have labor descriptions different than another. All minor differences in the way they're arranged and what's being printed on the screen. The default is 16, which gives you the most information. Other people like different invoices. You pick whatever you want. If you have a logo, you want to copy that logo into your wrench folder and then click on this little folder right here and choose the logo so it prints on your invoice. If you're using point of sale, you can choose a separate printer for that or the same one and a separate invoice to print out for your point of sale. Now on the bottom, we've got a report manager invoice that stands for report manager invoice. Report manager invoices will overwrite 
the invoice number at the top. So if this is set for 19 and this is set for 16 and you set this one down here for 241 and report manager 16, which is different than this 16, then it's going to print 241 and report manager 16, not the ones on the top. Now the advantage to the report manager invoices is you can customize them to be any way you want. And if you need help, we actually write custom invoices on a flat rate fee for you, and you can have a custom invoice. Uh, if you want the to-do list to look different than it does from the default, we can pick a report manager to-do list. Uh, I have mine set for four, and an estimate to-do list, which you can customize for your particular business. So that's the setup, and what we can do is anytime you're in here, you can click on this help button, and you can get help on setup but the setup is the most crucial thing in the program because it can customize our program for your business to do what you want. Thank you. If you have any questions, uh, call us at 1-800-457-7818.